Canada is quietly finishing projects so enormous, they will reshape daily life forever. In this video, we are going to look at Canada's most important mega projects nearing completion by this 2026 counted down by scale, impact, and long-term significance. These aren't just construction sites, they are systems that redefine cities, energy security, and economic power. Watch to the end, because the top-ranked project signals a major shift in North America's clean technology future. Number 8. Surrey Memorial Hospital Renal Facility, British Columbia At number 8, the focus turns to a project that does not dominate skylines but directly touches human lives every single day. The Surrey Memorial Hospital Renal Facility represents a major expansion in specialized healthcare at a time when demand is rising faster than ever. Construction began in 2023, and by late 2025, the exterior structure had already taken its final shape. Inside those walls is a carefully planned space designed around long treatment hours and patient comfort rather than cold efficiency. The core fact is clear and measurable. This expansion adds 21 new hemodialysis stations, dramatically increasing treatment capacity in one of the fastest growing regions in British Columbia. The deeper impact sits beneath that number. Metro Vancouver has seen a steady rise in kidney disease alongside population growth and aging demographics. Before this expansion, many patients were forced to travel long distances several times a week for treatment, turning survival into a logistical struggle. The surprising detail is how intentionally the facility was designed. Natural light fills treatment areas. Sight lines are open, materials are warmer and less clinical. This is a deliberate move away from older hospital designs that treated dialysis as a purely mechanical process. Long treatment sessions can last hours. Reducing stress during those hours can change outcomes and quality of life. Quietly without headlines, this facility alters the rhythm of life for thousands of families. And while this project transforms lives one patient at a time, the next one reshapes movement for an entire city. Number seven, Finch West LRT, Toronto, Ontario. Number seven brings the story into the heart of Canada's largest city where patience has been tested for years. The Finch West light rail transit line stretches roughly 11 kilometers across Northwest Toronto. It connects major residential neighborhoods, employment zones, and institutions through 16 surface stops built along a dedicated corridor. Construction officially began in 2019. By late 2025, control of the system had already transferred to the Toronto Transit Commission. Final testing and system integration were underway, setting the stage for an early 2026 opening. The core fact is straightforward. This line replaces some of the busiest bus routes in the entire city, removing thousands of buses from mixed traffic every single day. The impact of that shift is difficult to overstate. Finch Avenue buses were once packed beyond capacity during peak hours, crawling through traffic while carrying tens of thousands of riders daily. Delays were routine. Reliability was fragile. The surprising detail is how transformative dedicated right-of-way transit can be. By separating trains from traffic, the LRT creates predictable travel times in an area that had long been overlooked by rapid rail expansion. This is more than a transportation upgrade. It is a social and economic connector. Access to reliable transit determines job opportunities, education access, and daily stability. Communities that once planned their lives around uncertainty now gain consistency. And yet, as meaningful as this change is, the next project stretches even farther, reshaping an entire capital region. Number six, Ottawa LRT, stage two, East Extension, Ontario. At number six, Canada's capital city undergoes one of the most significant transformations in its transit history. The stage two East Extension of Ottawa's Confederation Line adds approximately 12 and a half kilometers of new track in eight additional stations. Rail service pushes deeper into Orléans, bringing high capacity transit to areas once dominated entirely by cars. Construction began in 2019. By late 2025, the project was approaching substantial completion with trial operations and system testing moving steadily forward. The core fact reveals the scale of change. Once fully operational, more than three quarters of Ottawa's residents will live within five kilometers of rail transit. For a city built around highways and winter driving, this marks a dramatic cultural shift. The surprising detail lies in the complexity of the build. 
This extension crosses major highways, incorporates elevated guideways, and adds new maintenance and storage infrastructure. All of it was constructed while keeping the existing system running. Ottawa's climate it adds another layer. Rail systems here must function reliably through snow, ice, and temperature extremes that test both equipment and planning. This project is not just about speed, it is about resilience. It reshapes commuting habits and land use patterns across the eastern edge of the city. Yet even with this expansion, public frustration has lingered elsewhere. The next project has spent more than a decade in the spotlight. Number five, Eglinton Crosstown LRT, Toronto, Ontario. Number five is one of the most discussed and debated transit projects in Canadian history. The Eglinton Crosstown LRT, officially known as Line 5, runs 19 kilometers across Toronto. It includes 25 stations and a long underground section through the city's core. Construction began in 2011, making it a defining infrastructure saga. The core fact cannot be ignored. By December 2025, the project finally reached substantial completion, with full public opening planned for early 2026. The surprising detail is the sheer length of time it took to build. This single line remained under construction longer than it took some countries to build entire metro systems from scratch. But once operational, its effect will be immediate and visible. Line 5 is designed to triple transit capacity along Eglinton Avenue, one of the most congested east-west corridors in the city. Commutes that once took over an hour by bus are set to shrink dramatically. Traffic patterns will adjust. Development will follow stations. The city will reorganize itself around this corridor. Love it or resent the disruption, the crosstown is about to permanently alter how Toronto moves. And while transit dominates headlines, the next project delivers something even more fundamental. Or number four, Sites Clean Energy Project, British Columbia. At number four, the countdown shifts away from movement and transportation and focuses squarely on electricity, power security, and long-term energy planning. The Site C Clean Energy Project stands as one of the most ambitious and controversial infrastructure developments in modern Canadian history, not because of its visibility, but because of its scale and lasting impact. The Site C Project is the third hydroelectric dam constructed on the Peace River in northeastern British Columbia, following the W.A.C. Bennett Dam and the Peace Canyon Dam. Construction officially began in 2015 placing it among the most expensive public infrastructure projects ever undertaken in the province. From the start, Site C was designed not as a short-term solution, but as a century-scale investment intended to support population growth, industrial electrification, and future energy demand. The core numbers behind the project are massive. Once fully operational, Site C adds approximately 1,100 megawatts of generating capacity and produces about 5,100 gigawatt hours of electricity every year. That level of output is enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes annually, while also supplying energy to major industries, transit systems, and future electric vehicle infrastructure. What makes Site C particularly significant is how dramatically it alters the provincial energy balance. The dam increases British Columbia's total electricity supply by roughly 8%, and it does so entirely through renewable hydroelectric generation. In an era where electrification is accelerating and demand continues to rise, that increase provides a critical buffer against future shortages and price volatility. By late 2025, the first generating units were already producing power, marking a major milestone after years of delays, cost overruns, and political debate. Full completion was projected for late 2025 or early 2026, transitioning the project from construction headline to operational backbone. Few projects in Canada have generated as much controversy. Critics questioned the escalating with environmental disruption and long-term necessity of such a large dam. Supporters argued that once operational, Site C becomes irreplaceable, delivering stable, low-emission electricity for generations. Regardless of viewpoint, the outcome is clear. Once completed, the dam becomes deeply embedded in British Columbia's energy system. Site C does more than generate electricity. It stabilizes future growth, enables large-scale electrification, and supports industrial demand without increasing carbon emissions. 
Quietly and continuously, it powers the province forward. And while the sheer scale of this structure dominates the landscape of Northern British Columbia, the next project on the list takes a completely different approach, cutting directly through the heart of a dense urban environment. Number three, Broadway Subway Extension, Vancouver, British Columbia. At number three, the countdown moves underground into one of the most complex and constrained construction environments in the country. Vancouver's Broadway subway extension is not simply an expansion of rail infrastructure. It is a structural response to years of overcrowding, delayed movement, and a transit corridor stretched beyond its limits. The project extends the Millennium Line by 5.7 kilometers, adding six new underground stations beneath Broadway one of the densest and most economically vital corridors in British Columbia. Construction officially began in 2021, with tunneling and station excavation taking place beneath active roads, hospitals, campuses, and commercial centers, while the city above continued to function. The urgency behind the project is rooted in demand. Broadway is the second busiest transit corridor in the province, carrying more daily riders than many entire rail systems elsewhere. Long before construction began, the existing B-Line bus service was operating far beyond capacity. Buses arrived already full, left passengers behind, and struggled to maintain schedules under constant pressure. The transformative detail lies in scale and efficiency. The Broadway subway extension is designed to triple passenger capacity compared to the former bus corridor. That single change reshapes how people move across the city, particularly those accessing Vancouver's largest hospitals, universities, research institutions, and employment centers. This corridor is not optional infrastructure. Medical staff, students, researchers, patients, and workers rely on predictable, high-capacity transit every day. By shifting demand underground, the subway replaces chronic congestion with reliable, high-frequency movement. By late 2025, tunneling had been completed and major structural work was well advanced. Station interiors, track installation, electrical systems, and testing pushed the project steadily toward its planned opening in 2026. This extension is not simply about faster commutes. It is about sustaining the economic and institutional core of Vancouver. Without it, the corridor would continue to strain under its own success. And while this project reshapes one of the city's most critical arteries, the next entry on the countdown operates on a scale that goes far beyond a single corridor, redefining movement, trade, and connectivity across an entire region. Number two, GO Expansion Projects, Greater Toronto Area. At number two, the story becomes one of breadth, ambition, and long-term regional transformation. The GEO expansion program is not defined by a single megasite or a single headline-grabbing structure. Instead, it is a coordinated, system-wide reinvention of how rail transit functions across the greater Toronto area. Launched in 2018, the program represents one of the most ambitious regional transit overhauls ever attempted in North America, both in geographic scope and in strategic intent. At its core, the program is designed to fundamentally change the role of GEO Transit. For decades, GEO operated primarily as a peak hour commuter rail system, moving people into downtown Toronto in the morning and back out in the evening. GO Expansion aims to replace that limited model with a high frequency, electrified regional rail network capable of all day, two way service. This shift is not incremental, it is structural, redefining the system from the ground up. To achieve this, the project encompasses a vast array of upgrades happening simultaneously across multiple corridors. New tracks are being added to increase capacity and eliminate bottlenecks. Entire rail corridors are being prepared for electrification, allowing for faster acceleration, quieter operation, and lower emissions. Great separations are removing level crossings to improve safety and reliability. Stations are being expanded and modernized, while advanced signaling systems are being installed to allow trains to run closer together with greater precision. The most surprising element of GEO expansion is how dramatically it changes the nature of regional rail service. When fully realized, several corridors will operate less like traditional commuter rail and more like urban rapid transit. Trains are expected to arrive every 15 minutes or better throughout much of the day, not just during rush hours. This frequency alters how people use the system making rail a viable option for spontaneous trips, 
off-peak travel, and reverse commuting. By 2025, the physical signs of this transformation were visible across the network. Bridges were rebuilt to accommodate additional tracks and future electrification. Rail corridors widened as tracks multiplied. Stations grew outward and upward, adding platforms, concourses, and accessibility features. In many places, entire sections of infrastructure were reshaped in preparation for changes that will only fully reveal their benefits years later. Much of this work happens quietly, often away from public attention. Unlike a single iconic structure, Joe expansion unfolds in fragments, construction zone by construction zone, yet its cumulative impact will be profound. Daily commuting patterns across the region will change as travel becomes faster, more reliable, and less car dependent. Housing development will increasingly cluster around stations, reshaping urban growth. Employment centers will become more accessible to a broader workforce. Ultimately, this project is about stitching together cities, suburbs, and economic hubs into a single, more functional region. It is a slow-burning transformation, but one that will define how the greater Toronto area moves and grows for generations. And yet, even this sweeping reimagining of regional mobility is overshadowed by the final project on this list. Number one, Northvolt Battery Gigafactory, Quebec. At number one stands a project whose implications reach far beyond transportation infrastructure and into the future of industry, energy, and national strategy. The Northvolt Battery Gigafactory near Montreal is a 170 hectare industrial complex dedicated to the large scale production of electric vehicle batteries. Construction began in 2024, marking one of the most consequential industrial investments in Canadian history. The core fact is historic in scope. This facility anchors Canada's entry into large scale electric vehicle battery manufacturing, positioning the country as a key player in the North American clean energy transition. Until now, much of the world's battery production has been concentrated overseas, leaving supply chains vulnerable to disruption. This factory represents a decisive shift toward domestic capability and industrial sovereignty. The scale of the project reflects its strategic importance. Once fully operational, the facility is expected to generate thousands of direct manufacturing jobs, along with many more indirect and direct roles across mining, materials processing, logistics, engineering, and supporting services. Its demand for critical minerals ties directly into Canada's resource base, linking extraction, refinement, and advanced manufacturing within a single integrated supply chain. By mid-2025, construction progress signaled both urgency and long-term commitment. Foundations were complete and major structures were already rising across the expansive site. The pace of development underscored how central this project is to broader economic and environmental goals. This is not a speculative venture. It is a cornerstone investment designed to operate at scale for decades. Importantly, the Northvolt facility is not just a factory, it is the nucleus of an industrial ecosystem. It connects Canadian mineral resources to high-value manufacturing and future mobility technologies. It attracts suppliers, research partnerships, and downstream manufacturers, creating a gravitational pull that reshapes regional and national economic planning. The ripple effects extend far beyond Quebec. This project strengthens North America's electric vehicle independence, reduces exposure to global supply disruptions, and accelerates the transition toward cleaner transportation. When this facility reaches full production, it will not simply produce batteries. It will help define Canada's role in the global energy and manufacturing landscape for a generation to come. These eight mega projects reveal a quieter side of Canada, one defined by long timelines massive investment in structural change, healthcare expansions that ease daily suffering, transit systems that reconnect cities, energy projects that power future growth, industrial investments that reshape global positioning. Together, they mark 2026 as a turning point, not through spectacle, but through permanence. If this breakdown delivered value, support the channel by liking the video, sharing it with others, and subscribing for more deep dive documentaries on global infrastructure.